from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with coverage of KubeCon and CloudNativeCon North America 2020, virtual. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and ecosystem partners. Hello, and welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of KubeCon plus CloudNativeCon 2020, the virtual edition. Abhinav Joshi is here. He's the Senior Product Marketing Manager for OpenShift at Red Hat, and Tom Dean is the Senior Director of Pro Product Management at Cloudera. Gentlemen, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Good to see you. Thank and you very much for having us here. Hey guys, I know great you're- Great to be here. It, it was great to have you. And guys, I know you're excited about the partnership and I, and I definitely want to get in and, and talk about that. But before we do, I wonder if we could just set the tone. You know, what are you seeing in the market? Tom, let's, let's start with you. I had a great deep dive a couple of weeks back with Anupam Singh and he brought me up to speed on what's new with Cloudera. But, but one of the things we discussed was the accelerated importance of data, putting data at the core of your digital business. Tom, what are you seeing in the marketplace right now? Yeah, absolutely. So um, overall, we're still seeing a, a growing demand for uh, storing and, and processing massive, massive amounts of, of data, uh, even in the past few months. Um, where perhaps we see a little bit more variety is on, uh, by, by industry sector, is on the propensity to adopt some of the latest and greatest uh, technologies that are out there uh, or that we, we deliver to the market. Um, so whether perhaps in the retail hospitality sector, uh, you may see uh, a little bit like more risk aversion around some of the latest tools. Then you, you go to the healthcare industry as an example, and you see we see uh, strong demand for our latest technologies uh, with with everything that is that is going on. Um, so overall, um, still lot, lots of demand around this space. So Abhinav, I mean, we just saw in IBM's earnings the the momentum of Red Hat you know, growing in the mid-teens and the explosion that we're seeing around containers and, and obviously OpenShift is at the heart of that. How have the last nine months affected your customers' priorities and what are you seeing? Yeah, we've been a lot more busier like in the last few months because there's like a lot of use cases. And if you look at the, the like a lot of the research and so on, and we are seeing that from our customers as well, that now the customers are actually speeding up the digital transformation, right? People say that, okay, COVID-19, has actually uh, speeded up the digital transformation for a lot of our customers for the right reasons to be able to help the customers and so on. So we are seeing a lot of uh, traction on like number of verticals and number of use cases beyond the traditional app dev. Data analytics, AI, ML, messaging, streaming, the edge, and so on. Like lots of use cases in like a lot of different like industry verticals. So there's a lot of momentum going on on OpenShift and the broader Red Hat portfolio as well. Yeah, it's ironic, the, the, the timing of the pandemic, but it sure underscores that this next 10 years is going to be a lot different than the last 10 years. Okay, let's talk about some of the things that are new around data. Uh, Tom Cloudera, you guys have made a number of moves since acquiring Hortonworks a little over two years ago. Uh, what's new with, uh, with the Cloudera data platform, CDP? Sure, so yes, our, our latest data uh, platform is called CDP, Cloudera Data Platform. Uh, last year, we announced a public cloud version of CDP running on AWS and then Azure. And what's new is just two months ago, we uh, announced the release of uh, the version of this platform targeted at the data center. And that's called CDP Private Cloud. Um, and, and really the focus of this platform, of this new version, has been around solving some of the pain points that we see around agility or time to value and the ease, ease of use uh, of the platform. And to give you some specific examples with our previous technology, it could take a customer three months to provision a data warehouse. If you include everything from obtaining the infrastructure to provisioning the warehouse, loading the data, setting security policies, uh, and fine tuning uh, the, the software. Now with CDP Private Cloud, we've been able to take those, uh, those three months and turn it into three minutes. Uh, so significant uh, speed up. In, in that onboarding time and, and time to value. And a key piece of this uh, that, that enabled this, this speed up was a, a revamping of, of the entire stack, but specifically the infrastructure and service, uh, services management uh, layer. And this is where the containerization of the platform comes in, specifically Kubernetes and Red Hat OpenShift. Uh, that, that is a, a key piece of the puzzle that enables this uh, order of magnitude uh, improvement in time. 
Right. Uh, uh, now, Abhinav, when you think about uh, Red Hat, you think about Cloudera, of course, Hortonworks, the stalwarts of, of, of open source, you got kind of like birds of a feather. How are Red Hat and Cloudera partnering with each other? You know, what are the critical aspects of that relationship that people should be aware of? Yeah, absolutely. That's a very good question. Yeah, so on the OpenShift side, we've had a lot of momentum in the market and we have well over 2,000 customers um, in terms of a lot of different verticals and the use cases that I talked about at the beginning of our conversation in terms of traditional and cloud native app dev, databases, uh, data analytics, like AI messaging and so on, right? And the value that you have with OpenShift uh, and the containers, Kubernetes and DevOps, like part of the solution, being able to provide the agility, flexibility, scalability, the cross cloud consistency. Like, so all that that you see in a typical app dev world is directly applicable to fast track the data analytics and the AI projects as well. And we've seen like a lot of customers um, and some of the ones that we can talk about in a public way, like uh, RBC Bank, HCA Healthcare, Boston Children's, BMW, ExxonMobil. So all these organizations are, being, are able to leverage OpenShift to kind of speed up the AI projects and, and, and help with the needs of the data engineers, data scientists, and the, and the app dev folks. Now, from our perspective, providing the best in class, uh, you say, like experience for the customers at the platform level is key. And we have to make sure that the tooling that the customers run on top of it uh, gets the best in class, say, experience in terms of the day zero to day two uh, management, right? And it's a, uh, uh, and, and it's an ecosystem play for us. And, and, and that's the way Claudera is a top ISV in the space, right? When it comes to data analytics and AI. And that was our key motivation to partner with Claudera uh, in terms of bringing this joint solution to market and making sure that our customers are successful. So the partnership is at all the different levels in the organization, say both up and down, as well as in the, uh, in the engineering level, the product management level, the marketing level, the sales level, and at the support and services level as well. So that way, uh, if you look at the customer journey in terms of uh, selecting a solution, uh, uh, putting it in place, and then uh, getting the value out of it. So the partnership, it actually spans across the entire spectrum. Yeah, and Tom, you know, I wonder if you could add anything there. I mean, it's not just about the public cloud with containers. You're seeing obviously the acceleration of of cloud native principles on-prem and a, and a hybrid, you know, across clouds, it's sort of the linchpin, uh, containers really, and Kubernetes specifically, linchpin to enable that. What would you add to that discussion? Yeah, as part of the partnership, when we were looking for uh, a vendor who could provide us uh, that, that Kubernetes layer, we looked at our customer base, and if you think about who Cloudera is focused on, we really go after that global, the global 2000 uh, firms out there. These customers have very strict uh, security requirements, and they're often in these highly regulated uh, industries. And so when we looked at Red Hat customers uh, base, uh, we saw a lot of overlap, and, and there was a natural good fit for us there. Uh, but beyond that, just our own technical evaluation uh, of the solutions and also talking to uh, to our own customers about who they, they do they see as a trusted platform that could provide enterprise grade uh, features uh, on, on a Kubernetes layer, uh, Red Hat had a clear uh, leadership in, in that front. And that combined with our own uh, longstanding relationship with our parent company, IBM, uh, it, made, it made this partnership a, a natural good fit for us. Right, and Cloudera has always had a good relationship with, with IBM. Tom, I want to stay with you, if I can, for a minute and, and talk about the specific joint solutions that you're providing with, with Red Hat. What do you guys bring into customers in, in terms of those solutions? What's the business impact? Where's the value? Absolutely. So <clears throat> the solution is called CVP or Cloudera Data Platform, private cloud on Red Hat OpenShift. And I'll describe three, uh, the three pillars that make up CVP. Uh, first, what we have is the five data analytic experiences. And that, that is meant to cover the end-to-end -end data lifecycle. Um, in the first release, which just came out two months ago, uh, we announced the availability of two of those five experiences. We have data warehousing uh, uh, for BI analytics, uh, as well as machine learning and AI, where we offer a collaborative data science, uh, data science tools uh, for data scientists to come together, uh, do exploratory data analytics, uh, but also uh, develop 
uh, predictive models and, and push them to production. Uh, going forward, we'll be adding the remaining three uh, experiences. They include data engineering or transformations on, on, uh, on your data, uh, data flow for streaming analytics and, and ingest, uh, as well as operational database for uh, real-time serving of both structured and unstructured data. So these five experiences have been revamped compared to our prior platform uh, to target these specific use cases and, and simplify uh, these data disciplines. The second pillar that I'll talk about is the SDX, or uh, what, uh, what we call the Cloudera Shared Data Experience. And what this is, is the ability for these five experiences to have one global uh, data set that they can all access with shared metadata security, including fine grained permissions, and a suite of governance tools that provide lineage, uh, that provide auditing and business metadata. So by having these shared data experiences, our developers, our users, can build this multidisciplinary workflows in a very straightforward way without having to create all this custom code uh, that can stitch you can stitch them together. And the last pillar that I'll mention uh, is the containerization of, of the platform. And uh, because of containers, because of Kubernetes, we're now able to offer that next level of agility, isolation, uh, and infrastructure efficiency on the platform. So you a, a little bit more specific examples on the agility I mentioned going from three months to three minutes uh, in terms of the speed up. With, uh, with uh, containers, we can now also give our users the ability to bring their own versions of their libraries and engines without colliding with uh, another user who's sharing the platform. That has been a big ask from our customers. Um, and last, I'll mention infrastructure efficiency. Uh, by uh, re-architecting our services to run in a microservices architecture, we can now bring back those servers uh, in a much more efficient way. We can also auto scale and auto suspend, bring all this, as you mentioned, bring all these cloud native concepts uh, on premises. And the end result of that is better infrastructure efficiency. Now our customers can do more with the same amount of hardware, which overall uh, uh, reduces their, their total spend on the solution. So that's what we call CDP Private Cloud. Great, thanks for that. I mean, wow, we've seen really the evolution from the, the Wild West days of, uh, you know, the early days of so-called big data, ungoverned, a lot of shadow data science, uh, maybe maybe not as efficient as, as we'd like, and, and, but certainly today taking advantage of some of those capabilities, dealing with the noisy neighbor problem. Abhinav, I, I wonder if you could comment on another question that I have is, you know, one of the things that Jim Whitehurst talked about when IBM acquired Red Hat was the scale that IBM could bring. And what I always looked at in that context was IBM's deep expertise in vertical industries. So I wonder what are some of the key industry verticals that you guys are targeting and succeeding in? I mean, yes, there's the pandemic has some effects. We talked about the hospitality, obviously airlines have to, have to be careful and conserving cash, but what are some of the interesting uh, tailwinds that you're seeing by industry and some of the, the more interesting and popular use cases? Yeah, that's a very good question. So in terms of the industry verticals, so we are seeing the traction in like a number of verticals, right? And the top ones being the financial services, like healthcare, telco, the automotive industry, as well as the federal government are some of the key ones, right? And at the end of the day, what, what all the customers are looking at uh, doing is be able to improve the experience of their uh, customers with the digital services that they roll out, right, as part of the pandemic and so on as well. And then being able to gain competitive edge, right? If you can have the services in your platform and make them kind of fresh and relevant and be able to update them on a regular basis, that's kind of, that's your differentiator these days, right? And then the next one is, yeah, if you do all this, so you should be able to increase your revenue, be able to uh, save cost as well. That's kind of a key one that you mentioned, right? That, that are a lot of the industries like the hospitality, the airlines and so on are kind of working on saving cash, right? So if you can help them save the cost, that's kind of key. And then the last one is, is being able to automate the business processes, right? Because there's like a lot of the manual processes. So if you can add in like a lot of automation, that's all kind of good for your business. And then now, if you look at the individual use cases in these different industry verticals, what we're seeing that the use cases kind of vary from the industry to industry. Like if you look at the financial services, the use cases like fraud detection, being able to do the uh, 
uh, risk analysis and compliance, being able to improve the customer support and so on are some of the key use cases. The cybersecurity is coming up a lot as well because uh, yeah, nobody wants to be hacked and, 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 and so on, yeah, especially like in these times. Right. And then moving on to healthcare and the life sciences, right? What we're seeing the use cases on being able to do the data driven diagnostics and care and being able to do the discovery of drugs, being able to say track COVID-19 and be able to tell that, okay, uh, which of my like, hospital is going to be full when and what kind of PPE am I going to need at my de uh, the, the, uh, the sites and so on. So that way I can yeah, mobilize like as needed. Are, are some of the key ones that we are seeing on the healthcare side. Uh, and then in terms of the automotive industry, right? That's where being able to speed up the autonomous driving initiatives, uh, being able to do uh, the auto warranty pricing based on the history of the drivers and so on. And then being able to save on the insurance cost is a big one that we are seeing as well for the insurance industries. And then, uh, but more like manufacturing, right? Being able to do the quality assurance uh, at the shop floor, being able to do the predictive maintenance and machinery, and also be able to do the robotics process automation. So there are like lots of use cases that customers are prioritizing, but it's very verticalized. Um, it kind of varies from the vertical to a vertical, but at the end of the day, yeah, it's all about like improving the customer experience, um, the revenue, saving cost, and, and being able to automate the business processes. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for that. I mean, we, we heard a lot about automation. We were covering Ansible, Fest. I mean, yeah. the, just think about fraud. How much you know, fraud detection has changed in the last 10 years? It used to be you know, so slow, you'd have to go, go through your financial statements to find fraud, and now it's instantaneous. Cybersecurity is critical because the adversaries are very capable. Healthcare is a space where you know it's ripe for change, and now, of course, with the pandemic, things are changing very rapidly. Automotive, another one, an industry that really hasn't hadn't seen much disruption, and now you're seeing with a, a number of things, autonomous vehicles, and you know, basically software on wheels, and, and insurance. Great example, and even manufacturing, you're seeing you know a real sea change there. So thank you for that description. You know, very often in the cube, we like to look at joint engineering solutions. That's a gauge of the substance of a partnership. You know, sometimes you see these Barney deals. You know, there's a press release. I love you. You love me. Okay, see ya. Uh, but but so I wonder if you guys could talk about specific engineering that you're doing. Tom, maybe maybe you could start. Sure. Yeah. So on the on the engineering and product side, um, we've um, for for CDP Private Cloud, we we've, we've changed our uh, internal development and testing to run all on uh, OpenShift uh, internally. Uh, and and as part of that, we we have a direct line to Red Hat Engineering to help us solve any issues that that uh, we run into. Uh, so in the initial release, we started with support of OpenShift 4.3. We're just wrapping up uh, testing of uh, OpenShift 4.5, and we'll begin with uh, OpenShift 4.6 very soon. Um, uh, on another aspect of their partnership is on being able to update our images to account for any security vulnerabilities that are coming up. Uh, so, uh, with the guidance and help from Red Hat, we've been we standardized our Docker images on uh, UBI or the Universal Base Image, and, and that allows us to automatically get many of these security fixes uh, into our into our software. Um, the last point that I mentioned here is that it's not just about providing Kubernetes. Uh, Red Hat helps us with the end-to-end -end, uh, solution. Uh, so there, there is also, the, for example, bringing a, a Docker registry into the picture or providing a secure vault for storing uh, all the secrets. So all these, um, all these pieces combined make up the uh, strong, uh, complete uh, solution. Actually, the last thing I'll mention is, is the support aspect, which is critical to our customers. Uh, in this model, our customers can bring support tickets to Clavera, but as soon as we determine that it may be an issue that, uh, related to Red Hat or OpenShift where we can use their help, we have that direct line of communication uh, and automated systems in the back end uh, to resolve those support tickets uh, quickly for our customers. So those are some of the examples of what we're doing on the technical side. Great, thank you. Uh, Abhinav, we're out of time, but I wonder if we could just close here. I mean, when we look at our survey data with our data partner, ETR, we see containers, container orchestration, container management, generally, and again, Kubernetes specifically is the 
the number one area of investment for companies that has the most momentum in terms of where they're putting their efforts. It's, it's, it's right up there and even ahead of AI and machine learning and, and even ahead of cloud, which is obviously larger, maybe and more mature. But I wonder if you can add anything and, and bring us home with this segment. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, uh, so uh, one thing I want to add is um, like in terms of, of the engineering level, right? We also have like between Cloud AI and Red Hat, the partnership and the sales and the go-to-market levels as well. Because once you build the, uh, the integration, it yeah it has to be built out in the customer environments as well, right? So that's where we have alignment um, at the marketing level as well as the sales level. So that way we can uh, like jointly go in and do the customer workshops and make sure the solutions are getting uh, deployed the right way. Right, uh, and also we have a partnership at the professional services level as well, right? Where um, the, uh, the experts from both the orgs are kind of hand in hand to help the customers, right? And then at the end of the day, if you need help with support, and that's what Tom talked about, that we have the experts on the support side as well. Yeah, and then, uh, so to wrap things up, right? Uh, so all the industry research and the customer conversation that we are having are, are kind of indicating that the organizations are actually increasing the focus on digital uh, AI transformation with the data and AI being a key part of it. And that's where this uh, strategic partnership between Cloudera and, and Red Hat is going to play a big role to help our mutual customer uh, through that uh, transition and be uh, able to achieve the key goals that they set for their business. Great. Well, guys, thanks so much for taking us through the partnership and the integration work that you guys are doing with customers. A great discussion. Really appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks Thank a lot, you. Dave. Really appreciate it. Truly really enjoyed the conversation. All right, keep it right there, everybody. You're watching the Cube's coverage of CubeCon plus Cloud Native Con North America, the virtual edition. Keep it right there. We'll be right back.